Here's the third signature program that goes across the, the campus, and this is Parish STEM. I think I mentioned last year at the Looking Ahead session, this thing came out of left field, right? We launched six strategic initiatives. It's like throwing spaghetti at the wall, right? When you're doing strategic brainstorming, you throw it and you see what sticks, right? So when we launched these six uh, three years ago, we were not sure which of them would take off, which would get traction, which would really move, right? Variety of circumstances, most notably this community's you know, huge tolerance for change and, and a sense of possibility and can do. Most of these have gotten significant traction, right? Three of them have become comprehensive and embedded and really defined Parish's program differently than other schools that we could be compared to. And Parish STEM is, is a classic example of this, right? So I'm from New York originally, had nothing to do with the subway map concept. That was just Jen Makins, our coordinator of STEM, and grades three through eight, and Jenny Lewis, who works with me and does all our graphic work. Everything you see here today is, is, her, is her creation, ultimately. Um, but we wanted to be able to demonstrate for you the fact that STEM doesn't exist in one excellent engineering class in the upper school here at Parrish. STEM doesn't exist because we have a robotics team in middle school. STEM doesn't even exist because we have Beasley STEM Center, you know, a, a nationally innovative pre-K through second grade space for kids to learn about design thinking, science, technology, uh, and math and integration, right? It exists because we have it comprehensively from start to finish. And if you look really just at the numbers up here on the screen or, or read through the offerings, you know, by your line, if you're a green line parent or an orange line parent or a yellow line parent, right, you can, you can kind of follow your trail, right? But at the end of the day, statistically, you know, we've got Beasley, all of our lower school kids getting 45 to 90 minutes in that space, okay, per week. In middle school, you know, we've got a third of our kids taking STEM electives. Every one of our fifth grade kids next year in their enrichment cycle will take a STEM elective, right? And we'll have a, that, that won't be a choice. They're having it, right? Third and fourth grade blocks are not math and science any longer. They're STEM, right? So they're built in, built in efforts there. 14 STEM projects in grades three through eight collectively. So Jen Makins and uh, you know, Mark McEwen, the subject area coordinator in science, and Jenny Leininger in math, they've all gotten together and said, here's the criteria for a STEM activity. Right? It has to incorporate all four disciplines. They've got a clearinghouse process for vetting whether an activity is STEM or not. Right? And they're building these projects. So there's 14 of them that every kid is getting. This isn't for the, this isn't for the robotics fascinated child, child. But we got that too. I mean, you look at the numbers. You know, of 12 first Lego, first Lego robotic teams, one out of five kids in robotics, that's tremendous, right? But every other kid is getting exposure to STEM through the program. And what we're seeing with our faculty now is this increased coordination between math and science faculty. And I'll tell you to their credit, none of us are forcing them to do this. They just said, oh, this is natural. Let's figure this out. So you're going to have uh, what we would call semi-STEM activities, where it doesn't have all four elements, but it may have two or three of the elements involved. Okay, So looking ahead, where this is taking us is you're going to see our program blend more. You're going to see us probably move more toward humanities and more toward STEM, actually up and down the entire pipeline. Right? Certainly in the, K in the K-8 space, we're really going to be pushing boundaries on discipline delineation because the world is transdiscipline. Right? It's not discipline-based, and our kids in the future they cannot be thinking just in, tr in tranches, right? The information age is over. The conceptual age has started. The information age, you know, they can go find what they want anywhere. They can Google it. They can Wikipedia it. So managing content and information is not the skills our kids need. The skills our kids need are conceptual-based skills. The ability to see connections between things that go across disciplines, be able to figure out what to do with that information. They need to do. Right? They need to perform. They need not just to consume and sit back uh, and digest information. So this is what's happening. And you know, the brilliance of this picture here that Jen sent me from eighth grade, and I take a lot of pictures. Any of you follow me on Twitter, I take a lot of pictures of what I see going on in school that's aligned with the practices. So follow me on Twitter if you're, if you're not. Um, but Jen sent me these two pictures. And you can really see it here because I love this picture on the right-hand side. I call Jake um, kind of our five-star recruit for robotics, right? He loves it. He's on the teams. He's a leader. He really, he's into it. He wasn't before he came to Parrish last year, mind you, right? He's been turned on since he got here. But he is a high-end user, okay? He's a high-end user. These other sweethearts in the picture, that's not their space. 
right? They're skilled in other areas. Their gifts are in other places. But in eighth grade, in eighth grade um, class here this past couple of weeks, they've been doing their mousetrap cars, okay? And they've all been asked to do these things in STEM. They're studying velocity, which is a science concept, among other science concepts. They had to get on the technology to create a position versus time graph, which had the mathematics and the, and the technology combined. And then, of course, they have to design and construct a car. Now, my science classes in middle school didn't look like that, right? I didn't get to use tools. I didn't get to put my hands on things generally outside of labs, right? And labs were basically cookie cuttered for me. I was walking through a textbook, consuming the information, pretty good at memorizing it, so I did rel relatively well, and I spit it back, right? You know, and these kids are in a whole different space in terms of application of skill and seeing connections across discipline. And the beauty of it is the mousetrap car came in a kit. They could have just rolled it out, right? But the process really pr uh, pushed them to design and redesign. They're also working collaboratively, if you'd notice, right? So some of the groups be upstairs running these things down the hallway, you know, in middle school near my office, shoo, 35 feet, awesome. You know, they thought they were going to win. We can do better. So they'd go back to the lab and they'd redesign it. They'd do it the next time. 10 feet, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, and so they learn all these lessons about, you know, well, sometimes you can overthink, overanalyze, right? Sometimes done and perfect. There's a difference, right? We got to figure that out. But that whole process of design thinking is about experimentation and tweaking and going back to redo. And that's what's happening um, through Parish STEM, not just through our core, not just through those robotics programs, which are great, um, but also through this integration of STEM into our teaching and learning. Let's go ahead then and, and, and put a cap on the first three because you now understand that these are comprehensive and embedded. Innovation is defined for us at Parish by taking these three signature programs and ramping them up across the entire segment of the school for all kids. You get that, right? And you understand how that helps us to differentiate. And you can probably see looking ahead that, you know, where we are now is these have flowered, right? But I'd call them fledgling, right? So for us looking ahead, the next three years, five years is about really tending to these, strengthening them, embedding them further, um, defining them more and making sure they, they are successful, right? And so that's, that's effectively where we're going. We're not going to start, you know, picking another new thing to do and another new program. We've got these that have to really become um, bell, bellwether, nationally recognized programs for us.